Um, we've looked at what the subsidies are traditionally for electricity sources over the last 50 years or so, and our view is that 73 percent of subsidies have gone to oil, gas, and coal, about 18 percent to renewables and to hydro, and about 9 percent has gone to nuclear. Now, you can look at any given year and the numbers are, are different, but that's the reality. The federal government has a system in place of incentivizing different types of energy. At the same time, we all sell into the same marketplace, so the cost of production is very important. And so I think if we're going to have a fair conversation about subsidies, it's got to be done in the context of what all the other technologies in the marketplace are receiving. I, I agree with that, uh, but I want to point out that historically, uh, the nuclear industry has uh, received more support, both direct and indirect, from the federal government uh, than any other energy technology by far. And uh, with a possible exception, if you include the defense expenditures to, to defend the sea lanes in the Persian Gulf, uh, which produces you know, much larger government support for, for fossil fuels, which I also agree with. But if you just isolating a technology, you know, the, the Congressional Research Service did a study of this, uh, somewhere between 70 and 100 billion dollars have been spent developing and supporting nuclear energy. And that's not including a lot of the indirect subsidies. For example, today, um, the Department of Energy gives free cores to the, to the TVA, just gives away diluted, highly enriched uranium cores that TVA does not pay for. Uh, enormous training advantages accrue to the nuclear industry because you get recruits in the nuclear navy who've been trained at taxpayer expense at about $200,000 per person. The people coming out of the naval reactor programs are yeah. some of the very best in the Absolutely. world. And Absolutely. And we're glad, I'm glad that they're operating nuclear plants. I'm just saying that there's a, there's a very close uh, tie between, historically, between the nuclear industry and the U.S. Department of Energy and the nuclear navy. And lots of indirect as well as direct support has been provided. And our position is not that, you know, nuclear shouldn't get any uh, R&D support, particularly for innovative technologies. We'd like to see the DOE spend money on, uh, on shifting from uh, water-cooled reactors to air-cooled reactors. And they're starting to do that. We'd like to see uh, money spent on improving safety, on, um, on um, reactor simulations. There, there's, there's good things to spend on. Uh, but in terms of the marketplace, we feel the nuclear industry had its shot and has had its share. And that uh, technologies that are much younger, that account for a much smaller part of the total generation, nuclear accounts for 20%. Um, so solar, give solar a break. It's less. It's under three percent of total generation. So, you know, uh, you know, other technologies deserve a chance to break into the market, and we should all agree that at some fraction of some percentage of total generation that all the subsidies should be cut off and, and everybody competes. I think that's a very interesting conversation to have. I'm, I'm much more concerned about how the planet goes from six billion people today, one and a half billion of whom have no electricity at all, to nine billion people in the year 2050 and how we meet that electricity requirement. We're all so concerned about that. I, I think we're going to have a lot of coal, we're going to have a lot of gas, we're going to have a lot of nuclear, we're going to have a lot of every other technology, wind, solar, renewables, hydro. So I, I really think if, if we go back, and I think it's a how do you count it, sort of when you talk about historic subsidies, but I think there is a basis for a very constructive conversation going forward, particularly if you look at the global marketplace, where we kind of get out of this discussion about historic subsidies, because I, I recognize and the U.S. government has had substantial nuclear energy R&D programs that come on all the way out of the Manhattan program and going today, as you suggest, naval reactors is a tremendous program for us. It's really benefited this industry. But I, I think if we've got to get to a point where there's a common ground, where we talk about prospectively how are we going to discuss these issues and what are we going to do going forward. And that's where, frankly, I think the traditional environmental community and the nuclear industry have a fair bit in common. I think it's I, why I, the president I, and the speaker I, said I agree. That. I agree. I, I, you know, I think that uh, you know, nuclear certainly qualifies as a low carbon resource. I don't rank it uh, environmentally or in terms of its cost effectiveness. Uh, equivalent to energy efficiency or solar or wind, but I believe nuclear obviously has a place. We don't want the 20 percent of generation that's provided by nuclear to fade away and be supplied by a carbon emitting source. So the nuclear industry has to position itself to be, in a, to, to be able to replace the 20 percent of generation that comes from nuclear starting in about 2030. Yeah, no, and, 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 and that to me implies a measured pace, the demonstration of uh, these new reactors to see uh, whether they're cost effective using the federal support that President Obama has offered. But don't subsidize the whole industry because then you completely distort the market. 
you can't, you, this industry has existed for 50 years, and it's, you know, a lot of people feel it's questionable that they should receive any federal support at this, at this stage. But just granted that where we are and where we need to get to get a political consensus, I think it's possible to agree that some subsidized nuclear units will go forward, a few, six maybe, six or seven, and we'll see how they operate. And if they're successful, we can transition to commercial financing and all the different energy alternatives can compete on a level playing field. Wind, for example, is almost at the point where it doesn't need a production tax credit. Some people say it's already at that point. So we're perfectly willing to examine eliminating subsidies for mature technologies. But when we're trying to push the envelope, especially the envelope of clean, renewable energy, uh, these new technologies deserve a shot, they deserve some federal support, and we believe it's fundamentally different from the situation that nuclear industry is in. And, and I think if you get past the subsidy conversation, you start talking about the fundamentals of each one of those technologies. One of the things I find most attractive about nuclear energy is a nuclear plant runs 91% of the time and produces massive amounts of Some of them of do. Some of them do. Some of them run more than that. I mean, but so the average is 91.1%. Remember in the, in the setup piece, the yeah. TVA reactors they showed? TVA has had one of the worst records in the industry. And last and year, 90, our average capacity factor was 91.1 percent, a down from 91 point a little bit more than that the year before. But on the other hand, much more reliable than wind and solar and hydro, which are very much dependent upon what the weather is like outside. And so I think what you've got to be realistic about is there's got to be a mix. Absolutely. You, no one source is going to meet it all. And so the real issue is, to me, What's the requirement going to be? How are you going to meet that requirement? Well, and how do you get a set of policies that make sense? Absolutely. Going and I think the, the extent to which the nuclear industry could wean itself off its current political allies, that, you know, you're kind of joined at the hip through some of the big utilities with the coal industry. And, uh, you know, we were disappointed at the level of support that the nuclear industry provided for the climate bill in Congress. We didn't think it was uh, assertive enough and vigorous enough. Most of the energy I felt uh, coming from the nuclear side was dissipated in getting subsidies and support and, and various tax advantages for the nuclear industry rather than working on the fundamental premise that a price on carbon would advantage nuclear. So I know they brought us here to, di to disagree with one another, but and I think we've done that on some things, but I think if we got the camera out of here, we could go on and have a constructive conversation. Maybe we ought to do that.